What's up everybody, Greg here with Lens Portigo and Lens Rentals, and in this video, we're gonna be looking at some camera tests of the brand new Sony FS5 Mark II. So there's a few things that we're gonna be looking at. The first one is the high ISO performance test, so going from 2000 ISO all the way up to 102,400 ISO. And then we're gonna look at the exposure recovery, so how much we can bring back in the shadows and highlights when we over and underexpose the image. And then lastly, I'll show you some sample footage and what you can get with this camera. So let's jump into the first test, looking at the high ISO performance. So starting off with ISO 2000, this is the lowest ISO that you can get in S-Log3. Uh, if you notice up in the upper right hand corner, we have a crop in on the image up to 300%. So you can really see in detail what it's doing. We are going through a ton of ISOs every third stop. So this is ISO 2500. So 3200 still looks super clean. This is the native ISO for S-Log3. So that's where you're gonna get the most dynamic range. Going up to 4,000, we're still getting a really clean image and it's staying sharp and we're not losing any detail. Continuing up to ISO 5000, we're still having a really clean image and there's really nothing to complain with about this. I would definitely feel comfortable pushing it this high and even up to 6,400. If you do see in some of the darker shadows, like next to the plant on the bottom left and the glass jar right in the center, we are starting to see a little bit of noise in there, but for the most part, all of the brighter areas are pretty well controlled with that noise level. All the way up to 10,000, we're still getting a usable image out of this, and I would definitely feel comfortable using this in a documentary style setting. Up to 12,800, we're starting to see a little bit more of that dancing noise, but we're not seeing a lot of that color shift or color noise. Going all the way to 16,000, Again, this is very, very usable, and I wouldn't have any problem throwing this into a project and throwing a little bit of noise reduction on top of it. Going all the way up to 25,600, we're really starting to see some dancing noise in those shadow areas. Making our way to 32,000, we're seeing some softening of the image now and a lot more of that color noise, especially in all of the shadow areas on the image and just a general overall softness, but not too much of that color noise coming in yet. Up to 51,200, we're getting a lot of dancing around and blotchy black spots in the shadow areas, and this is probably unusable for most things. Up to 64,000, we're getting close to the upper limits of what this camera can do, and we're seeing a lot of softening up of the image. To 80,000, this is getting into the unusable territory where I would never try and push this camera. And then finally, 102,400, this is maxing the camera out with the highest ISO, and this is definitely unusable for pretty much any circumstance. It's pretty incredible what you can get with this camera and how high you can push it. Let me know in the comments below what your limit is and how high you would push this ISO. Next up, let's take a look at the exposure recovery. Okay, so starting off with our correct exposure, we're at an F8 ISO 800, and this is looking pretty solid. It's a little bit brighter than I would have liked, but we're getting good exposure over the whole image. Going into one stop underexposed, we have our actual shot on the left, and then we have our recovered shot, or what we've been able to bring back in post-production on the right. Already going down to two stops and adding in some ND filters to bring our exposures down, we're seeing a lot of noise in those shadow areas, which we didn't really see with the FS5, which is pretty interesting. Going down to three stops under, even more shadows, and I'm wearing a dark shirt here, and you can see a ton of that color noise dancing in those areas, and it doesn't look very good. Then we're going to four stops under, a ton of noise here. This is completely unusable. There's no noise reduction that would be able to bring this back. And we're also getting a really heavy magenta shift. And then down to five stops, Again, totally useless. You're not gonna get anything with this footage. Now we're gonna go back to our correct exposure, so F8 ISO 3200 again, and then we're gonna overexpose the image. So we're going up to one stop overexposed, opening up to a 5.6. Here we're able to recover all of that information back, and we're getting a very comparable image to what our correct exposure is. Going to two stops overexposed, we're able to recover a lot of that information back in our face and some of the brighter areas. We are starting to lose it a little bit in the mug on the top shelf there, which you'll notice even more when we go to three stops overexposed. Here, we're not able to recover any of that information back in our face, in that mug, or any of the basically white areas of the image. Going to four stops over, again, totally gone. This is unusable. You're not able to get any of that highlight information back. And then we're gonna go to five stops overexposed. And again, same thing. We're even having a hard time bringing some of those colors and some of the darker areas back because it's so overexposed. 
So this camera definitely does better in those overexposed situations. So when you can, if you're shooting an S-Log3 like we were, definitely try to overexpose your image rather than underexpose. Lastly, let's take a look at some of the sample footage you can get with this camera, and then we'll wrap it up. Hope you guys enjoyed that sample footage and you got something out of this video. If you want to try out the FS5 Mark II for yourself, make sure to head on over to LensProtego or LensRentals.com. The links will be in the description below. Also check out the FS5 test where we run through these same ISO and exposure recovery so you can see how they compare. And if you want to see more camera tests just like this one, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe for new videos every single week, and I'll see you in the next one.